Dalvin, thanks for coming to see us, man. Uh, thank you for having me on today. On a rather warm day. But as you reminded us and reminded me, you're a Georgia guy. <laughs> I can remember I covered Herschel Walker's freshman year for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. So this goes back to 1980. Mm. And I was a, a, a Gary, Indiana kid. So it got hot in the summer. But that was my first summer in Georgia. Going to pra Those practices before that season, I think that's the hottest I've ever felt, man. That humidity – it would just curl your nose hairs. It's unbelievable. Yeah, you know, being from Georgia and going to Alabama, you know, all I know is humidity at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so today, uh, with the breeze out here, it felt, it felt amazing for me. Refreshing for you. Most definitely. It's a beautiful That's a great <laughs> advantage for you to have. Um, well, again, we appreciate the time. Everybody, I guess, it's natural when you make a coaching change is asking, okay, what's different? What looks different? What feels different? In terms of the way, to this point at least, mm -hmm. practice has been conducted, what stands out to you? that is different than what, you know, Mike Zimmer preferred when it came to the first week of training camp? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Coach Zimmer and Coach KO are two different co type of coaches, different coaching styles and everything. But, you know, uh, with Zimmer, it was great as well. But uh, with KO, it's just um, so far it's just been so uh, – it's been amazing. Uh, you know, the guys come in every day ready to work, excited. The energy uh, Coach KO brings every meeting uh, in the morning with the uh, team meetings and things like that, super exciting. And, um, yeah, we just have a lot of young guys, a lot of old guys, everybody coming together as a unit just – excited to get uh, get better and make each other better around them too so every day is super productive for everybody younger younger guys and older guys do you, you buy the notion we're talking to, with pete bursich about this that sometimes human nature being what it is you know it, it it's helpful to hear a different voice it, mm -hmm. it, it you sometimes people just get tired of the same voice doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the voice but that that can get a little old and so when you hear somebody different maybe deliver stuff in a different way that can be helpful. Do you buy that? Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, it goes both ways. As um, long as you bought into the process, no matter who's talking, as uh, long as you're listening, that's the, that's the biggest key. In terms of the defense itself, when you look back on last season, how would you evaluate your performance and really the team's performance? Because I know defensively it did not go the way we're accustomed to with Mike Zimmer defenses, and I'm sure it didn't go the way mm -hmm. collectively that you expected it to. How do you what, what what how do you look back and evaluate what took place? Um yeah, you know, we had a lot of injuries last year across the board, especially on defense and things like up the front. And um you know, we want to build off of that. We want to make sure everybody's healthy. We want to make sure everybody goes out and um, everybody knows the game plan, everybody knows that their techniques as well, the guys technique around them. So, it makes you play that much faster. And um person, I know I want to build on uh, just being more effective in the pass rush this year. Uh, uh, with Zadarius and Daniil, just uh, us running natural games, just feeling, uh, getting the chemistry um, as like we just naturally run things. And um, yeah, I feel like we're on a good pace right now with that in practice. You see a couple of times I might just hit up the field and they just wrap around me and we switch contain reps, uh, assignments and things like that. And just, it works great. So, you know, as we continue to go and just continue to build that chemistry, I feel like the sky's the limit for our defense. The uh, the base defense, no big secret, is more is now a 3-4, which is different mm -hmm. than what you, you uh, came to last season. I don't know. I mean, I was talking again to Bursich about this. I, maybe we get too hung up on 3-4 versus 4-3. Mm -hmm. How much does it change your role in terms of what is expected of you? Is that a big challenge, small challenge, or are you accustomed to it? Uh, I feel like it's super similar co compared to the 4-3 we ran last year. It was played almost like a 3-4. And um, it's super similar from the – I was playing a four-hour last year. I'm playing the exact four-hour this year. And um, we also got a four-man front because, like, almost like a multiple defense depending on who we're playing. And, um, yeah, I feel like the assignment across the board is, uh, you know, up front where, you know, you're stopping the run. We're going to um, play my gap, and then if I need to, I can play my gap plus and things like that. And, um, yeah, we're going to be stout up front. And, um, yeah, it's just the assignments are pretty straightforward because uh, this defense reminds me a lot of Alabama when I was there. Oh. Uh, I play pretty much the same position I'm playing now, and it just feels like uh, all of it's starting to come back to me. That's good. That, mm -hmm. That's got to be helpful. Did I read somewhere that you suffered a big time? I think I thought it was a knee injury in high school playing soccer. Yeah. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I was playing striker at the moment. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, how much, you know, we always just assume football guy, guy who ends up in Alabama, mm -hmm. did you play soccer a lot, or what's the back story to that? Uh, I was uh, just pretty much playing that year mostly. But uh, I, like, joked around playing soccer before, like just playing, like, pickup and stuff like that. But most of that was uh, wrestling, baseball, and stuff like that, track. So a little of everything. Yeah, a little and of what everything. Happened at, was, uh, what happened was, I mean, we, again, we associate, was it an ACL? It was ACL. That's what I thought. Usually, you know, we associate that with football, I guess, more than soccer. I mean, what what happened? Do you remember? Uh, if I remember just correctly, planted wrong. Uh, or? I went up for a header, 
and got undercut when I was coming down. Ooh, yeah, man. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Yeah, that's 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 did that, did that have any impact in terms of you being you know getting your 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 football career going? Um, you know, uh, I had to work that summer going coming back in, uh, going into Alabama. You know, right. working off of it, coming into ACL. I uh, learned a lot of adversity up front, <laughs> and um, yeah, you know, just uh, I feel like Alabama did a great job getting me back from the ACL, and yeah, I just I just kept going from there. What did you learn? What do you think are the most important lessons you learned? I mean, we we associate Alabama obviously with with football greatness, excellence. The the record speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. What what do you think? What did you take away from that experience that you think has carried over to your pro career? Um, the biggest thing from Coach Saban, I would say, trust the process. Um, you know, the game isn't won the day you step on the field. The game was won back in OTAs or in the conditioning or when you was weight training, depending on the, those extra drills uh, back in the summer and then in the spring. So you have to, uh, that, with that mindset, you know, you have to go each and every day. Not you, like you can't even just be like, I'm just going to slouch out today and, you know, just slack off today because those are when the games are won because you'll be able to push that much further and go that much harder mentally by the time the season gets here. Preparation. Yeah, because the game, that's the fun part. That's <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Dalvin Tomlinson is our guest, Vikings defensive lineman. Um, you know, another thing I read that, I, that, that interested me mm -hmm. was your uh, devotion to your, your, mo your late mom now mm -hmm. because it, it sounds as if, based on the biography I could put together, so your, your dad passed away when you were pretty young, like five years old. Is that true? Yes. Okay, so is this a situation where basically your mom then had to raise you? Uh, yeah, my mom and my Aunt Mary. Um, pretty much I had a lot of uncles and aunts, and we all, like, stayed together, so big family guy. And, and what, mm -hmm. I mean, y there's so many times that you've talked about her and how she's always your mom. Uh, Melinda, is that her first name? Yes. Is, is that that voice is still speaking to you. She's been gone now for a little while, but that mm -hmm. that voice still speaks to you. W why is that such a powerful voice, and how important has that been for you? Uh, it's uh, everything for me because she was my best friend as well as my mom, and um, she always pushed me to do more stuff, and uh, she was my motivation. Uh, she's my why I play football today. And, um, just how happy it made her that when I was going out there to make plays and things like that is um, just my why, and I, how, it's why I want to get up and push that much harder to make her proud, even though she's not with us today. Is she a tough critic? Was she, was she capable <laughs> of, if she didn't think you were playing right, would she – she, could she get in your face, or, or, uh, or what was her approach? Oh, uh, yeah, she uh, she would probably get in your face more than the football coaches <laughs> were, yeah. <laughs> and not just me, my teammates as well. So uh, she's she was pretty much like a coach off the field. Which is part of the preparation then for you, because it definitely. puts you in the right mindset. If she's saying she's challenging you to do more, correct? Always, yes. It's tremendous. How long ago did she pass? Uh, 2011. Still tough every day when you think about it? Every day. I mean, anytime you think about it, it's not something you can just get over because uh, that's your mom. That's, it's impressive. It's mm -hmm. impressive, your devotion to her. I, I, I noticed that in several stories. Mm -hmm. All right, one last thing relating to this upcoming season. Mm -hmm. um, this team has missed the playoffs the last two. Now, you weren't here for both of those. You know, people are kind of used to at least making the playoffs here. That's been part of the deal. So whenever you put a new staff in with changes – do, do a new approach the question the obvious question is well can you put it together immediately can it be put together in your mind immediately enough to where this team can be a playoff team in 2022 what do you think yeah you know uh the playoffs is always the goal for us uh you know we strive that every single year we put our helmets on and uh, i feel like we take it day by day and just continue to grow it at the at the rate we're growing and build the chemistry the way we want to i feel like the playoffs is the, i feel like that's one of the things we want to accomplish this year and i think we we're very capable of doing that daniel what have you seen by the way what are your observations everybody is curious about daniel who's not been to, you know fans who have not had a chance to see him or be to practice, and I know you're not, you know, you've only had, pad, I think, padded drills once, and it's still kind of low-key, mm -hmm. but in terms of the way he's moving, in terms of what you're seeing from him, are we going to see the Daniil that, that a lot of people associate with a guy who had a chance to be a, a, a just a great player and had been a great player? <laughs> Every time I see Daniil fit pads on and see him go out there and do pass rushes, uh, that's Daniil Hunter. <laughs> that's all you can say. Uh, yeah, he's still a freak athlete and comes out here and and the way he works on his craft every time he steps on the field with or without pads is, is amazing. It's something you don't see on a day-to-day -day basis um, around the world, I would say, because uh, he focuses on his craft and his technique so much. Um, he, he makes me want to step my stuff up a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> That's okay. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming to see us, man. I appreciate it. All right, no problem. Thanks Thank so for much for the, for the time. Dalvin Tomlinson giving us some time today, Vikings defensive lineman.